So in this demonstration, we'll show you how to create an editable table um, in the approach that JET recommends with JET8. Um, this is an example. This is the JET example. Shows you how you can go into a table and update uh, data. Um, basically, just navigating through the table um, and being able to edit each one of the rows. Um, and this is what we're going to do now in Visual Builder. Um, in JET, you have a recipe of how to do this. And you can see that the first step is to create an array data provider, which would be the base for your application. So let's go ahead and do this in Visual Builder. So we have our business object over here, and we have an empty page into which we're going to drop a table, um, and that would be our UI component. Right? But as we said, the source of data for the table needs to be an array data provider, and we're going to define it by starting with defining a type. So we'll define a type, and um, this is going to be based on the employee object, and it's going to have the structure of an employee. Okay, so we're going to call this uh, emp type, for example. And then we'll just choose the field that are interesting for us. Um, choose department as well, you can include country, for example, and click finish. Okay, so now we have a type. Next thing is to define a variable. We said we need an array data provider, so we'll pick up array data provider here, and we'll call this one the AMP ADP, and we'll create this type. Then we'll tell this type that it's based on this AMP, we'll tell this ADP that it's based on this AMP type that we have defined before, and that the key attribute here is AD. That's the attribute that uh, identifies the record. So this is our first step, and um, the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to populate this with data from employees when we start the page. So we'll go to the events of the page, we'll create a new event in the VB Enter event, and we'll create an action chain, we'll call this one Fetch Amps. All right, so let's go and edit this action chain. We're going to call a REST endpoint to get the employees. This would be the get all on our employees. And then we're going to take the values that it brings and assign them to a variable. So let's change the name here to get amps. And then in the assign variable, we're going to do an assignment into the amp ADP. We have an array here of employees. And this would be the same as what we get here under items same structure, basically same fields, a um, little bit more fields over here, we can just drag this array into the data array like that. Now we also want to make sure that when we initialize it, we initialize the values into an empty array. So we'll choose empty here and click save. So now we have an array in the ADP that has the data from employees. We can go back to our UI, take the table, and set the data for the table to come from our ADP. We can now see the rows, but we don't see any columns because we haven't chosen any. So let's go over here and choose the columns we want to have on the page. Um, we also include department here. Okay, so that should be enough for our initial table. So now we have a table that shows data, but it doesn't allow us to actually update it. Okay, so to update the data, there's a few other things you need to do. Let's go back into our recipe over here. First thing we need to do is change the table edit mode to be row edit. So we'll do that by picking up our table component, looking at the properties, uh, looking for the property called edit mode and setting it to row edit. Okay. Next thing we need to do is um, define one or more inline cell templates, okay? Um, and then those sample, sem templates would have either a read-only or an editable content based on the mode of the row is in. So let me show you how this looks like in the JET example. Okay, we have the table. Each column then has a template. For example, let's look at this template, okay? There's a bind if that checks the status of our row. If it's navigation, we show a text read-only. If it's an edit mode, we show an input component. And you can see this repeating in each one of the rows after that as well. 
Okay, so now we need to achieve the same thing inside Visual Builder. So we'll pick our table, okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop input component on top of the existing component. So we'll put an input text on top of the name, okay. We'll take an input number and put it on top of the salary field. And for the department, we're actually going to use an input select one. Like that. Okay, we can add options to our select one from here. And we want the list of departments. So we'll show the department name. And we'll return the ID of the department. All right. So this is our table now. Um, it looks pretty much the same, but if you look at the code, you will see that now we have templates for each one of the columns over here. Okay. Now the templates that we have right now are the input component. And as we said, those only need to be shown if we are uh, in edit mode. So let's copy a bit of code from the jet sample. Okay. We'll copy the bind if over here like that. And we'll put it inside the templates that we have. So one over here, and then we need to um, close that one, like that. We might want to reformat this so it's a little bit more clear to read. So let me just do this over here. So this is kind of the structure we want, okay? Um, one value that we show in navigation, one value that we show in edit. Now, notice that right now it's complaining about the cell because cell is not something we use over here. Instead, we're going to use dollar current. So we'll put it over here and we'll do the same thing over here like that. Okay, and also over here. Okay, so now we want this basically for each one of the columns after that. So um, we'll switch um, this one, okay. Bring the same concept into the salary. And let me just do it from the beginning of the row to be better aligned. And the same thing over here. Oops, so again, from the beginning of the row. All right, like that. All right, so now we have the structure over here. And um, there's a few more things we need to do. Um, one aspect is that each one of those fields you can see is actually read only right now. That's not what we want to have here. So make sure that you remove the read only. You can just click it here to remove this property from each one of the fields. Okay. Um, then the next thing is if you read the recipe a little further, after you created the cell templates, okay, you want to uh, then go and use a before row edit listener to clone the row data into a variable. Okay, so let's do that thing because that's actually the variable that we're going to use to edit the data. Okay, so back in Visual Builder, what we need to do now is define a new variable. We'll call this one the uh, let's call it my row. Okay. And this is again of the same employee type we have over here. And this would represent the row that we're currently editing. So on the table, we have an event. So let's go back to design mode. 
choose the table, there's an event here. The event is called, sorry, the event on the table is called before row edit. And what we want to do is we want to take the current row and assign it to this variable that we created, my row. And it's very easy because we have information about the row data. We just assign it to the my row like that. Okay. So now we have the data in the my row variable, which means that if we go back to the UI over here, what we need to edit is not the current data, but rather the my row data, right? So if we look, for example, we'll start here at this variable. It's not the current data that we want to edit. It's actually in the my row. We want to edit, in this case, this is the name of the employee, so put name here. Uh, we want the same thing over here, okay? So the value that we're editing in the number is again from my row, I'm editing the salary. And again, over here in the select one, the value is actually going into my row and the department, like that. Um, and that's over here. Okay, so now we have the part where we're doing the editing. Um, I'll show you, by the way, that if you switch to the live mode right now, you can now double click on a row, go and edit it and modify values, and pick something from the department and leave. But what you see is that once we leave, we get back to the original value, right? And that's because of what we need to do next, right? So if we go back to the recipe again, what we need to do next is before row edit end listener that takes the changes that we do and push them back into the array, okay? And again, this is actually quite easy to do here in Visual Builder. If you go over select the table and events, you can add a before row edit end event, which is fired when you leave the field, okay? And what we want to do here is we want to actually use the fire data provider event. Okay. And we're going to refresh the data in our AMP ADP. And we're going to update it. Okay. And if you look at what is involved in passing information to an update, you need to provide the data and the indexes. The data comes from our my row variable. Okay. The index is the index of our current row or you can also use the keys. So we'll use the row key over here. So this would update our ADP with the correct data. So if we go back to our UI and we'll switch to be in live mode. And now we go back and we update Dave and put a different salary here and choose a different department over here. And we leave the field. We get the updated values over here. Um you can do the same thing here. Again, picking up a different department and leaving, and the data is basically updated. So now we have this basically working in our UI. You can also see that running with the tabs and keyboard allows you to navigate between rows. There's one more thing that you probably want to do, which is to actually save the data into the database once you're done doing the changes, okay? So let's add a save button to our application. And we can just pick up, for example, a button and put it up here, okay? We can call it the save button, okay? And in the event, when we're clicking it, and doing an action, we want to do something. We want to go over the rows and update them into the database. So we're going to use um, for each loop over here. And the loop is going to run over the rows that we have in our MPADP. So the data area that we have over here is what we'll use for the items we're looping over. And then for each row, we're going to call a REST service. Okay. 
the REST service is the REST service that does a patch operation on an employee, and you can see it needs an employee ID. Okay. So the employee ID that we need here is from our current record. Okay. We need the um, ID of the employee over here. You can see that when I drag and drop it, <coughs> it shows me the information for row zero in the array. I actually need it for the current row, so the current index is what I need here. If I drag and drop it, it would put it over here at the end, which makes it very easy to uh, cut it and then paste it over here, like that. Okay, so this is the ID. Then we need to tell what data to actually update. And again, this is quite easy. We basically want to take whatever is in our um, specific row over here and put it into the body, like that. And again, instead of using zero here, you want to have the current index. Save. All right, so this is going to loop over all the rows and send them to the database to get updated. So there's one more step that we should do if you look at the Again, like the cookbook over here, they recommend to set the column sizes in the table to prevent flickering. Um, and again, this is something that is quite easy to do in Visual Builder. Go back into your UI, pick up the table, and then you can go and for each one of the column, you can set the width of the column. Um, so let's, for example, take this one, set it to 50. Um, We'll go back, set the name to be a little longer. So let's say 200. Sizes are in pixels, by the way. Um, the way that I'm doing it, at least right now, you can specify other sizes. Um, salary, we'll do 250, for example. And a department over here. We can even do 300, like that. Okay, so now our application is ready to run. So let's click and run our application. We get our data shown here and we can start to manipulate it. So we'll double click on a row and call this guy Shoni, update his salary to be 2000 and we can then switch him to work in another department, for example, IT. Um, take, for example, uh, this guy and um, update him to be Christophe, for example, put his salary at 6666, and again, switch his department to HR, and then we'll save the data. So this would roll over all the rows and update them. Um, in another blog, we'll show you how to actually make it a bit more efficient. But just to show the results, uh, we have Shoni and Christophe here. If we go back, um, into our business object, look at our data right now. And we'll have Shoni and Christophe here with the right departments and the right salaries. So that's your editable table working.